Today we're going to today we're going to learn about the associative property of multiplication. This is lesson 1.6 part 2. Learning target today is to identify and apply the associative property of multiplication. Very similar to the associative property of addition, except now we are moving or grouping, sorry, grouping is a better word, factors differently and not terms. So APM states that when multiplying more than two factors, the way they are grouped will not change the product. So no matter how we group what's being multiplied, the outcome will always be the same. And you can see this in the example A times B. We're grouping the factors A and B, and then we're multiplying those factors to C. It's the same exact thing as multiplying A and grouping B and C, which are being multiplied. So what I've done is taken numbers, and I've substituted them in, and you can choose any three numbers for A, B, and C, and you can see that they will always come back as true. When we multiply 2, negative 2 times 3, we get a negative 6 times 4 is a negative 24. And here we've grouped the, the 3 and the 4. So the 3 and the 4 are going to get multiplied first, and that gives us a 12. And then we're going to multiply it by a negative 2, which is a negative 24. So with the associative property, the location of the, the factors does not change. Right? We had A times B times C. So they're in the same physical order. The difference is the order of operations or how we perform them, the order we perform them in changes. On the left side, we multiplied negative 2 and 3 first because the parentheses. And on the right side, we multiplied 3 and 4 first because of the parentheses. But no matter how we group and the order we perform the multiplication, everything is going to get multiplied at the end. So we get the same answer. Same is true with this example here. We've got four factors, and they're in the same exact order, negative 2, 5, 3, and negative 4. The order that we perform these, these operations is different, but the fact that they're all being multiplied is not. So we can change the groupings and still get the same answer. We get negative 10 here times 3 times negative 4. Negative, three times, or negative 10 times 3 is negative 30 times a negative 4. And a negative 30 times a negative 4 is a positive 120. Over here, we're multiplying the 3 and the negative 4 first since they're grouped. And we get negative 12, and we multiply that by a 5. 5 times negative 12 is negative 60. And negative 60 times negative 2 is a positive 120. So the difference between the commutative and the associative property is very, very very distinct. Remember, exponents tell you the number of times the base is being multiplied to itself. So we have exponents here, so this x squared means that x is being multiplied to itself twice. So I can rewrite this um, as x times x times y times y times y. There's three y's being multiplied, so I can write y three times. I'm going to do the same thing here for the associative property. So here's where the real difference comes in. If I wanted to multiply the three y's first using the commutative property, what I would have to do is I would have to commute them or move their physical location in front of the x's. I'd have to commute each of these. And we can commute factors. If everything's being multiplied, we can change the order that it gets multiplied in. So we can say y times y times y times x times x is the same exact thing. Now I can multiply the y's first. But the associative property, we can achieve the same goal in a different way. So instead of moving these factors around or changing their order, what we can do is use parentheses and we can group them in a different way. So by grouping the three y's here, we now know when we perform this operation, these three y's are going to get multiplied first and then the two x's. So in the, in the end, we can achieve the same goal just in a different way. Now it's very important to note that Associative property means that you can group things that are being multiplied. Or you can group things that are being added. An example that, or a non-example, is when you take something that is being multiplied and you group it with something that's being added. So if you look here, we've got two terms, one term and two terms. And we've got three factors in the first term, three things that are being multiplied. We can group these three things in any way we want. 
And then in the, in the second um, term, we only have two factors, which there's no way to group t two. You just they're just the way they are. You can put parentheses around them, but it doesn't change the group. The trouble becomes when we try to associate things that are being multiplied with things that are being added. So an example of that would be 5xy associating it with the 4 that's being added, a. So you can see the location of our, our numbers and variables are in the same spots, but we've associated some a factor of one term with a factor of another term, so we're, cha we're changing operations here. So this is a bad example of using the property incorrectly. So before we get into examples using this property, it's very important that we know how to rewrite expressions in expanded form. We're going to see a lot of exponents, so it's important that when we write this expression here, az squared plus d times r to the third power, when we expand it out, that we expand it out without changing the order. Because if we change the order, then we've changed or we've used the property and we're, and we're not wanting to use a property, we just want to expand it out. So the correct way to expand this out would be to not change the order. So we have az squared. So that means that we have az times itself twice. So we have az times az plus d times r times r times r. This is expanded correctly without changing the order. Now, if we expand this incorrectly, which is very easy to do, and that's why we're talking about this. What some students may do is they see that a is being squared and z is being squared, so they might write it as a, a, z, z, plus d, r, r, r. And you can see here that a, a, z, z is not the same thing as a, z times itself. a, a, z, z is using the commutative property of multiplication to change the order. This is actually a squared, z squared in the correct order. So it's important that we expand things in the proper order as we go through these proofs. Here we have complete the proof. And like I said in the, in the previous slide, expand factors with exponents. This makes it very easy to, to see what's going on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this. We've got an exponent here. So we've got four things that are being multiplied, even though it only looks like three. Because you can see down here, we've got four factors. We've got one factor, two factors, three factors, four. So how do they get those four factors? They expanded it. Negative three over eight times x times x times b. It's two x's being multiplied because it's squared. And now we can see, okay, what has changed? The order has not changed. The factors are in the same order. However, the way the factors are grouped has. You can now see that they're grouping the x and the b together. So what property allows us to group these together? That property would be the associative property of multiplication because we're grouping factors. Here we have the expression 3 times negative 2 times 5 times 8 plus a. And you can see we have to get to this bottom expression. What do you notice differently about the bottom expression? Well, the order of the factors is the same. There's four factors here. One, two, three, four. The order of them is the exact same. Three, negative two, five, and eight. So the order is not changed. However, there's now two sets of parentheses, and you can see these two sets of parentheses. We've got one set, this larger set, and then we've got this smaller set inside the larger set. And so we've got two things that we need to do because you can only associate one thing at a time. So we, we need to associate um, either the smaller set first or the larger set. I'm going to go ahead and associate these three factors, negative 2, 5, and 8, this red set. So here we have, now we can write 3 times, and we can associate negative 2 times 5 times 8 plus a. So all I've done is associated these three factors, and I've made them almost one entire factor. Now they make up one factor. So we have two factors total in our first term. And now within that second factor, okay, we're going to associate again the 5 and the 8. So we can rewrite this as 3 times, we don't need to include the dot, we know it's multiplication, times negative 2 times 5 times 8 close that set, plus A. 
and now we've associated it and we've gotten to the end where we need it to be so these are the exact same I've just rewrote it so how did we get here we associated things that were being multiplied again associated property and multiplication okay so the first thing I'm going to do is expand the expression so we've got D R squared means there's two R's being multiplied parentheses ZY to the third power so that means ZY is being multiplied in that exact order three times so ZY times ZY times ZY plus 4x and you can see that the first step is saying we need to associate something that's being multiplied right so we can look at the end our end goal and you can see the order R, R, Z, Y, Z, Y, Z, Y, plus 4, and this should say, this is incorrect, this should say X. The order has not changed. However, there's now two sets of parentheses. They have grouped the R and the Z, and then they've also grouped a larger group, the R, Z, Y, Z, so let's go ahead and first start by grouping one of these two sets. Let's group the first four factors. So let's group the R, Z, Y, Z. So we're going to take this and we're going to group those factors. So we have D, R, and then we group this R, Z, Y, Z. So we group it like this. And they can be rewritten just like this. And I'll write it one more time so that it's in black. So we have D, R, grouped with R, Z, Y, Z. So we group these four factors and then we leave the, the rest the same. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six things being multiplied. Now within that third factor, that set of parentheses, they grouped two more factors together, this R and the Z. So that will be our next step, is to group those two together. So we have now R, Z grouped together, Y, Z, Y, Z, Y plus 4X. So now you can see that we've made the, the smaller group. And what did we do? We, we associated, we used the associated property of multiplication. And you can see that these two expressions are the exact same. I just rewrote it. This is the last example today. So I'm going to go ahead and first expand this expression out. So we've got three n's being multiplied. That's an m. N and n times gp in that in that exact order being multiplied twice so gp times gp minus 4x squared in that exact order twice 4x times 4x times y so i've just expanded this out right and now let's try to figure out what's going on is the order changed have they commuted anything let's see there's two n's three n's so the n's have not changed location the G has not, the P has not, the GP has not. So, so far, everything is in the same exact order. So, it looks like they're just associating things. So, how many times do we have to associate, or how many expressions are we going to have to rewrite to get three sets of parentheses? Well, if they're regrouping three times, then we're going to have to rewrite three expressions. So, let's go ahead and rewrite the first expression. We can choose which group goes first. So, our first expression can be rewritten as, if I group these three factors n, g, and p, our expression can be written as n, n, grouping n, g, p, g, p, minus 4x, minus 4x, y. Okay, so I've rewritten everything. I've just grouped three factors. So that is associated property multiplication. And now we need to group something else. So we can either group the n and the g together, or we can group the 4x, y. I'm going to elect to group the n and the g together. So now I'm going to group these two factors together. So now we can rewrite the expression as n, n, grouping n times g, p, grouped, g, p, minus 4x, 4x, y. That was the associated property of multiplication. And now you can see the final step is to group the last set, which is the 4x, y, right here. We need to group these. And that is our final step. And I don't need to rewrite it because it's written right here for us. And what did they do? They grouped them 